yields spiking this morning following the release of the job openings and labor turnover survey that sparked a wider sell-off in equities. Job openings in August came in hotter than expected, the labor market tighter than expected, reporting more than 9 million openings. On Friday, we're going to get the September jobs report. Let's bring in Mark Zandi from Moody's Analytics. Um, Mark, what does this signal about the state of the overall economy when you've got this number uh, of job openings still? People have been hoping that this number was coming down. Yeah, John, you know, I had a different different interpretation of the jolts numbers. I mean, I don't okay. pay much attention to the job openings numbers because, uh, you know, businesses, uh, you know, once they, there's no cost to keeping those positions open. So I, I really don't think they measure what we think they do and aren't really important. The statistic that matters the most in that report is the quit rate. That's the percent of folks that are quitting their jobs. And that's come way back in and it's back to where it was pre-pandemic. And that gives you the best window on wage growth because it's when people quit jobs and switch jobs that they get these pay, big pay increases and wage growth is juiced. And of course, that's key to inflation. That's key to monetary policy and interest rates. So, you know, I, I look at that report and I say, hey, that, that felt pretty good to me. I mean, the quit rate was as low as it was. So I was, uh, I'm a little perplexed by the market reaction. I think you know, lots of stuff going on, a lot of mo momentum, uh, speculation, technical factors at work here, but the fundamentals don't argue for much higher long-term interest rates. Okay, interesting. How do you weigh in what's happening with unions and strikes for higher wages and stronger benefits along with this report? If you want to focus on the quits part, are you also relying on some kind of compromise that, that isn't weighted so much toward the unions wage-wise going through? Yeah, and don't get me wrong, John. I mean, the labor market's strong. It's, it's tight, you know, no doubt about it. I mean, we're sub-4% unemployment rate, and we've been there for a long time, and that's a tight labor market, and that would be consistent with, you know, labor flexing its muscles here, UAW strike being the latest example. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, the labor market actions are pretty modest, and I don't think that's going to drive the train on wage growth more broadly. And wage growth more broadly, you know, no matter how you measure, whatever measure you want to use, feels like it's moving in the right direction, at least to be consistent with, you know, the Federal Reserve's inflation target. So, you know, uh, the UAW strike is indicative of that tight, of that strong, uh, uh, tight labor market, but I don't think it's suggestive that we're not going to get wage growth back to you know, something that's more consistent with the Fed's inflation target. Mark, can you have a recession if employment continues to be robust? No, you can't. And that's the, the second best indicator. So I can rank order all those indicators in the JOLTS report for you from most important to least, most being quit. The second uh, quits, the, most, the second most important is layoffs. They remain very low. And that's, that, you know, that's just not consistent with recession. I mean, at the end of the day, you need layoffs because, uh, to generate recession because it's the layoffs that spook consumers uh, when they you know, then pull back on their spending, run for the bunker, and that's when you get recession because it's the consumer that drives the train ultimately. And they're, just, they're not going to pull back uh, to a significant degree if we don't see a, a pickup in layoffs. So, and, and I just don't see it. So another good reason why I felt like to me that Jolts report was kind of sort of where you'd want it to be.